everybody welcome back today I'm going to go ahead and do the um, part two to the doodle and sketch box for May 2017 this is the whoops sorry this is the cover of the box I got box number two there's a part one video that I will link in the description um, if you need to go back and watch the unboxing but uh, I have everything right here. This, well, everything except for the candy bar that came with it. I had in my palette, so a lot of these are new. Um, I had Quinacridone Rose and Azure. Tatiana, I don't know what this says on here. If you could tell me what that says, that would be really helpful. But I believe this is drawing paper or something. It seems stiffer than regular drawing paper, though. I'm not sure. interested these um, colors are very light fast they're all these three are laid, labeled a uh, level three which is a uh, very good light fastness quality the Prussian blue is PB 27 the red ochre is PR 102 lemon is PY 3 they all have a th rating of three for their light fastness. Um, the Indanthrene is also a three. It's PB60. Azure is a three, PB15. And Quinacridone, oh, Quinacridone Rose, magenta is what they call it. Huh. Well, we call it, I guess the English is Quinacridone Rose. Um, that is PR 122 and has a light fast rating of two, which is good. The others are excellent. Um, so that is that, and that is their rating on the packaging. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my feathers and we'll see what we can come up with here. Um, she does things in a loose manner. Um, and it's very interesting to watch. Some of it she does more abstractly, and then others she does more, more, um, oh, what do I want to say? More tight, I guess. But she still uses the wet into wet technique. This is a cool one, too. I wonder what birds these are from. These are really cool feathers. Very pretty. And this is the last one. If I can get it out of here, which side do I open? Okay. So this is what I have. Now she did not copy these perfectly. She changed up the colors, used blues and greens in her feathers and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to probably do the same. And this one is really unique because it's got this feather and then it's got another feather on top of it. See? That's a whole another feather there. Very pretty. Okay, so I've got my feathers up here just to refer to and my colors. Um, <clears throat> I did a little bit of practicing 
just to make sure I knew what I was doing here. It's pretty simple. It's just that um, she gives so many great instructions, I'm sure, and I can't understand a little, not even a bit of it. So that's kind of a bummer. I wish they would give subtitles. That's the only drawback to having this box. But if you know how to paint already, they're still fun to do, these challenges, even without having the language to go behind it. You can usually watch along and and get what you you want. Oh, I'm not used to this paper. While I'm painting here, um, I wanted to give you a little information about Sofia Radianova. She um, started drawing from an early age, like many children do, and her kindergarten teacher or teacher when she was young um, noticed that she had some talent in drawing. So she talked to her parents about it and told her parents that she should get them, that they should get her a um, art teacher to instruct her better in art. And her parents went ahead and did that. And she had this art teacher from that time until she was about 12 years old. And her parents were both chemists. One was Jewish, one was Russian. And apparently, if both parents weren't Russian, there's a lot of um, discrimination that went on in the Soviet Union before the Soviet Union broke up. And I don't know if it's still that way or not, but... Her parents, uh, her father was laid off, and they were kind of forced out of the country um, so that he could get work. And what he did was move them to Israel. And that's where she lived out the remainder of her formative years. And while she was there, she didn't have an art teacher, so she gave up drawing pretty much completely until... She got a little bit older, and her parents finally found an art teacher for her who was who spoke Russian. There was a Russian couple that moved into the area that they lived in Israel and went ahead, and um, they talked to them, and she finally got her art teachers back. But they did not want to teach at all. They were not interested in teaching. But they finally wore them down, and <laughs> they hired them on to teach her art. One was a sketch artist, and the other one was a watercolor artist. And Sophia did not care for watercolor at all. But eventually they got her into it, and now she loves it. She still paints primarily in watercolor and pastel, but um, she had those teachers until she graduated, I guess. Then she went away to college, was going to become a chemist like her parents, and her parents noticed that she wasn't happy and told her that she should go ahead and pursue art as a career. At first, they didn't want that for her because they thought she couldn't make it in the art world, you know, that she could make enough money to live on. All of you guys can probably understand that. But anyway, so that's what they did, and she ended up going to art school and got a secondary uh, degree in art. So um, now she's doing this, and she sells her work in Israel, and I think online as well. I think she may have an Etsy account also. Um, but anyway, so here what I'm doing is I'm just using this rigor to add some of the the fuzziness from the feathers on the edges. And I used the big mop brush, the straight edge, to, um, to make the white vein in the feather or bone or whatever it's called. I don't know the technical term for it. One other thing I forgot to say um, about Sophia was that... Um, once she became 21, she's no longer considered um, under her parents' care, I guess, or she's considered an adult at 21 there. Her parents moved to the U.S. eventually and live in Minnesota or Wisconsin, one of the two. But anyway, and her little sister went with them, but she couldn't go with them because she was an adult. So... Um, she says the one thing is is that she misses her family a lot. She doesn't get to see them very often at all. So um, that's the one thing that she's not happy with. 
but she is married and she has a child. Um, so she does have family there in Israel. Now here what I'm doing is I'm taking a clean brush, thirsty brush, and I'm drawing out some of the color along the edges where the feather splits. First I'm trying it with this and it's not working out very well so I'm going to switch over back to my other brush and I will do it with that. Now the one thing I'll say is when you draw the color out, if the, if the paper is still pretty wet underneath, the color may seep back a little bit into the area that you just drew out, but don't worry about it. Just give it a few seconds, then do it again, and then go back and do it again, and go back and do it again until it finally stays light like you want it. That's all you have to do. Now you can see I went back in and it seems to be staying a little bit better now. But I just misted it a little bit in order to add a few dots onto the um, surface. And now I'm taking some other blues and I'm just using that rigger again to feather out some of the edges. And I'm obviously not going that fast. <laughs> That's pretty fast. but. Um, really that's all I'm doing is just pulling 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 you can use the color that's already there that if it's still wet or you may want to add a deeper value of color to get that to show over the top of what's underneath Here's the first one I finished. I was just messing around and <clears throat> it's not really a good composition at all. And I know she spoke about composition in her video <clears throat> and um, I couldn't understand a word of it, but she was talking about how to set up your feathers in a good composition. Mine kind of cover the whole page. 
and there's really nothing that's focal here. Um, so this isn't, as far as composition goes, this is really poor. But um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other kind that she showed, which was a little more um, wet into wet, just fooling around with color. Um, she gets her whole paper wet or a lot of the paper. And um, I'm just going to moisten it really good. It saps up a lot of water. Okay, now I'm going to let it sit for a second. salt in. I'm just going to put it all over here. Some of the wettest spots. I may have to drop in a little more color. It doesn't look like it'll show. Somebody I saw post on another channel about salt and how you shouldn't really use salt on your paper because it's an acid and <laughs> and it'll ruin your paper. And if you were one of the people who saw that video, that is not true. Salt has a pH of seven. I've had a ton of chemistry in my nursing classes. Um, a pH of seven is neutral. It's not acid, it's not alkaline, so it is not gonna destroy your paper. So you never have to worry about that with salt. Otherwise, artists would not have been using it for years and years, you know? So, I'm just adding some drops here and there around my salt. <laughs> Just go ahead and wake this out. Now with salt, if you've never done this technique before, what it does is it draws the liquid up into the salt and it leaves the color behind. And then it'll leave, it'll leave specks all over the paper. It's really a great effect for snow. Um, if you wanna make something like a scene that's snowing, you can do a real gray blue background and while it's wet, drop some salt all over the place. and when it dries, it'll look like snowflakes coming down. It's really beautiful because it kind of makes these crystallized looking things. But um, this is going to look a little bit different and we'll just have to wait and see how it comes out. Um, but don't worry about using salt on your paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. Like I was gonna say, um, you do not ever wanna dry your paper or you're not gonna get the effect of the salt. You'll dry the paper underneath the salt and then it won't do anything. So it's one of these slow processes that you just have to wait out. And um, once it's done, then I'll go ahead with my feathers on this.
Okay, well this one I finished. I think I like it a little bit better. The other one was too plain, but she did them both ways. She did a plain one and then she did um, a wet and to wet salted one. And I have to say, I don't know, it might just be the salt because it's a larger grain salt. I had a little more trouble getting the salted effect, although I did get some interesting effects with it. I was wondering how she got all these blotchy marks on hers, and now I realize it was the salt. Um, because it's such a large grain, it was probably spreading the salt out in the water and um, was creating these really wild effects, which is different. <coughs> so you might want to practice with some larger grain salt or even rock salt like you put on your driveway in the winter unless you live in Florida, like Brian does. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, the smaller grain salt, you'll see, leaves more of that snowy effect that I was telling you about. And the larger grain salt seems to be doing this. So um, I did get some really cool kind of looks, though. There's something on here that I thought was really neat. I don't know if I can pick it up. I can't see my camera lens here because my light is too bright. But in here I've got these little speckles that are kind of cool. Um, and then I splattered some paint as well. And I added a little more paint at the end. But I was looking, turning it this way. This is the way I painted it. I was turning it this way and that way. And I kind of like it this way. Like feathers floating down and then landing. Um, so I think I... I kind of like it that way. I'll have to look at it for a while. That way is wrong, definitely. That just doesn't look right. Either that way or this way. And then this was the other one. So anyway, have some fun with feathers. Make some feathers, pull your paints out, and just have some fun. Um, if you need a feather reference and you don't have a feather, don't go raiding any pretty baby nests or anything. But look online at some... Um, feather photos and you can you can get an idea for the different types. I mean, there are so many variations. I mean, you just look at what I had here to work with. Um, my blue one I lost somewhere. But, um, and then I had this big one, which looks almost like an eagle feather. Maybe it's a seagull, but um, anyway, I'd like to find out what these birds are. So everybody, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Have a great day. God bless you. Bye-bye.